about the, uh, a, the decision to go in the dirt mile? Well, I, I think it, I think because of the checkerboard, Tom and I came to the, to the conclusion that we hadn't really got to go through what we wanted because of the back off of the race in the Derby, and and then she had a little bit of mucus and other stuff at Preakness that it, it, you can't really send a horse out against that kind of caliber horses, those kind of caliber horses that have never been a mile and a quarter, at least a mile, you know, at least go a mile and three sixteenths. And she hadn't done that yet. She's got he's got plenty of speed. And uh, I think it's a, I think it's a good opportunity to see whether we can beat the older horses because they're going to wind up running against the eight or nine older horses, and we got next year coming. Uh, well, talk about your Preakness experience. Uh, backing up, I haven't seen you since the. Uh, well, the I mean, it, it, it was it was uh, hard to take, but there were lots of reasons. Uh, you know, I think when she when she, when he when, when he wasn't able to get out of the gate. Uh, and got stopped and then got kind of stuck in that quagmire. Plus, okay. it was a pretty sandy track. I think a lot of things combined. Uh, so I think you could just throw, draw a line through it. My, you know, my, uh, chief, uh, my chief advisor, Seth Hancock, said you could just draw a line through that race. And uh, we're, you know, she, he's doing the kind of race, the kind of training right now he did before the Derby. Uh, and I think that was our, the worst blow was getting that happen to us. Uh, but I think, I, think we're, I think he's where he ought to be. Okay. We're gonna find out. You, you mentioned some mucus, so he came out of this. Yeah, the yeah, I had some mucus in him afterwards, and and it, it really came out the next couple of days when they started treating him, because you can't treat him, you know, at any point before the race. Uh, so it was, it was, it was, it was nothing. It was nothing that I haven't seen before. You kind of get used to it. We were on such a run, we'd won four straight races, and and uh, I think really ready to go to the Derby, and it just became a little bit of a downhill slip. But he's healthy. He's 100% healthy, and, I, and you see the way he's on the track today. He's, he's a horse that's going to run some more big races, in my judgment. And in January, if somebody had said, "Hey, this horse is going to be fourth in the Preakness," that would have seemed like a outstanding. Yeah, no, I, I, I really feel really good about the year we've had. And you know, the the, the thing that we would, the only thing he really hadn't done yet is win a Grade One. If he runs the Grade One, one of these horses, one of these races. Uh, wins a grade one, then he's, that his future's kind of set in, in, uh, in granite. But from my standpoint, you know, I, I breed the race, I live the race. I'm not looking to hurry him to the, to the breeding shed yet. But winning the dirt mile would be huge because not only is it that grade one, but that's a race that's produced a lot of, you know, yeah. it's like the Met Mile as far as stallions and stuff. It, breeders like that that's grade right. one mile. Well, I think most, most really good sires are milers. Even Bernardini was probably more of a natural, you know, he could go the distance and everything, but his speed was geared for a mile probably. Distorted Legacy, the mare, is probably a, a little more uh, uh, you know, distance oriented. You know, she ran, you know, got beat two and a half lengths in the tur Philly mare's turf and, uh, out there on Breeders' Cup Day. And so uh, I think he's got all the bright breeding to do both. I think he can, I think he could sprint and I think he could, you know, go long. I think he showed that when he, when he ran the, uh, the race out at uh, out at uh, Churchill Downs before we moved on to the, uh, you know, moved on to the to the next race, the the next stakes race where he was only one turn. I think he proved he's a pretty good sprinter. Do you wish it was a one turn mile versus a two turn? I mean, he like you said, he ran well at one turn seven eighths, and certainly he's well, run I, really well at two I, turns. I, I think the the key here is not the mile. I think the mile's fine. I think the track layout because you could into the curve so quickly on the on the start and then you got that short run to the 16th that's that may put her put him at a little bit of a disadvantage but in terms of the in terms of of the distance I don't have any problem with him getting the distance he'll get the distance and he'll do it well so you think off these last two works he's where you want him to be going into this race he's you know there was a couple hiccups yeah. um you know late summer or early fall whatever it is but yeah. you think he's no excuses at this point, other yeah, than I, the trip, I think perhaps. I think the work last week uh, at Churchill showed that we're back to, back to where we were. So, what about what you saw this morning? Well, I like the way he did it. He just he, he just glides, and you know, comments from Brian about how he was just full of himself makes me feel pretty good. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. The good thing about it about horse racing, if it doesn't go your way, you can just leave, go home. You know? <laughs>